It's your girl Paige Turner and I'm back with another video. Hey, 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 hey. Alright, y'all. So most of you have already read the title, and yes, it is true. Your girl is about to do a story time. Before I get into that, I'ma also be doing a pack with me video because your girl has a surprise coming up. Guys. And I'ma let y'all know in vlog number four, it should be where I'm going next. Baby, it ain't no mini road trip. No, baby. Your girl is getting on a plane and she flying out. So stay tuned for that. But before I get into this video, make sure you like. Like, y'all be liking juicy stories with cute little endings. Comment like you will once you hear about what the story is actually about. And subscribe because we family now. And you want to join the late crew. You feel me? Let's hey, money, I can be your best dream. I appear in your best dream. So if you real supporters, then you know your girl just came from Texas City. So I got to unpack before I could pack. But that ain't what y'all clicked on this video for. Let's just be real. That is not what y'all clicked on this video for. So I'm gonna get straight to it. Before I start talking about the story time, I just wanna clarify that this happened a while ago. It happened a while ago. I was a totally different person at the time. Um, and I'm not going to use specific names out of respect for everybody involved in the story. So I'm gonna just use initials and y'all can detective it out if you want to, but it's not that big of a deal, all right? How do I do this? All right, so I met, let's say T. Let's go with T. I met T at a studio one day recording music, music from outside the door. And so the manager of the studio was like, you wanna go in, check it out, like see if you can lay a verse or whatever, and ended up knocking on the door and I went in to check in the beat and we actually like started to make a little song or whatever it was a vibe it was a vibe it was a vibe and so from that we just started to see each other around the studio i started to become cool with the people they hung out with um like s the brother and um n and d and t all of the little friends all the friends we became super close it was like this little group up at the studio or whatever right fast forward me fast forward a whole relationship just like started right after he used to live in a very bad neighborhood and so you know me like i don't care about that that, that has nothing to do with who you are as a person if you're a valuable person then i rock with you i mess with you you know i can be with you but if you ain't got no values it don't matter where you are at that moment and so that's what i vibe off of so t moved from a bad neighborhood and his dad finally got the opportunity to move to a good neighborhood and so you know me as a partner i'm excited i'm like yeah it's only like an hour away it's cool it's whatever we can make it work da 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 da, da. i can't believe i'm so glad you're getting out of your situation i'm so glad god is blessing you all right week one at the new place that he was at t felt really out of place which is expected coming from the neighborhood that he came from going into a neighborhood like that. I felt the same way when I first transitioned into it. But by week two, T was acting real shady towards me. You know, like, it started to, like, turn into, like, a... I don't know. To me, it felt like, oh, you were part of my old life and I'm trying to forget that type of stuff. But at the time, I'm like, I'm your girlfriend. Like, you can't treat nobody like that. Like, you can't... You know what I mean? Just because you feel like you upped one. That ain't how you treat somebody. Like a couple of months in, I drove. I was driving back and forth. I was doing all of the moving and going back and forth to see the other person. And I would go up there like every weekend, which was crazy because I was there every weekend. Like it wasn't even like, no, I'm driving all the way out every weekend, getting rides from people and things like that. And you acting shady. So at this point, I'm just like, mm, what's up? What's up? Um, T ended up breaking his phone so we couldn't communicate as well. So I gave him an old phone that I had in the crib just to, you know, have a kind of line of communication so he could call his people, do uh, the whole nine, the whole nine yards. And so little did I know, little did I know that that was going to take a left turn on me. That was going to take a left turn on me. All right. Been cool, but like you could tell something's kind of like off per se 
but you're not taking a big deal in it. It's just like somebody's in a new environment. The distance is new for you all, even though it's not that far. You know, you're expecting things like that. You're expecting a little bit of shift, but it's all about being open in communication with the person which I thought we had. T was not responding to my text messages and was basically texting me things like, oh, you deserve better. Somebody's just gonna treat you better. And I'm not, I'm confused because this came out of left field. Like, I'm mad confused at this point. I'm looking at the messages like, what are you talking about? Like, what did you want? Like, if you're going to, if you're going to um, end this, you finna do it to my Facebook because we don't do that. So, you know, your girl hopped in the car real quick. Baby, text message, I'm outside. Like, you gonna have to come say what you gotta say to me, to my face. I'm outside. Come on outside. Let's get to come outside. Too hype, because at this point, I ain't gonna lie, your girl's a little mad. Because it was just the text messages was mad weird. And like, you know, your girl don't do vague. Um, So I pull up and they start talking about like, how they've been feeling depressed lately and how they've been feeling down. And I'm just like, oh, well, why don't you just say that? Like, I get that, I get depression, like I've been there, you know, but I'm like, if you're somebody I care about, I want you to know that you don't have to go through it alone. Because most people choose to go through stuff alone because they feel like they have to. Like, they feel like nobody's going to get them. But, like, I try to be as much as standing as I possibly can, even though I'm still human. Because I understand that everybody's not on the same journey. Either way, go. So we start talking about how they've been feeling mentally ill, basically, and saying that they have been feeling really depressed and feel like they don't really fit in anywhere or like they don't have really like a place in the world. If you need time and space, I'll give you the time and space that you need like to grow and heal. I completely understand that. Sometimes talking to other people about it can be difficult, let's say. We fast forward from that conversation literally and we're just like laughing and talking now and I asked them had they had eaten for the night because I know like going through like that during the day it can be a lot and um but so we go to McDonald's and uh, that's up the street we kind of always went to McDonald's as a little date we go to McDonald's up the street and we share a meal because baby I don't care what you say everybody ain't got money like that and at that time we was doing what you had to do all right then they we we shared the meal and they were leaving and so i'm just like okay well do you feel like you you need you need time do you feel like do you want to what do you want to do what do you want to do basically like do you want to be together or you want to be apart and they were just like i don't want to be together anymore and i was just like okay so you girls started crying of course because it's a very emotional moment we've been together for a while now we were going on um we were going on a while now i don't know I don't remember how long we were together again. I don't I don't remember. But we were going on dating for a while now when we had been with each other and we had seen each other. Like I was driving up there every weekend. Like we seen each other constantly. If they would have stuck to their original choice instead of moving the way that they moved, I would have so much more respect for this person. But since they didn't, then that's kind of where it came like mm -mm. everything kind of seemed like faked. You know what I mean? So, oh, it's a mistake, this, that, I should never did that. No, I, like, basically just trying to take it back. And then I'm, I'm just like, if you like, you wouldn't have said it if you didn't feel that that's what you needed. You know, man, they just like, oh, I, I don't want that. I thought, I said it because I thought that's what I wanted, but that's not what I want. I don't, I don't want to separate. So I call up friends because I'm ready to leave and we get into the car and I'm about to go. So on the way back, driving with the friends, headed back to my side of the town, they're texting me like, oh... I'm so sorry. I didn't mean that. I thought that's what I wanted, but seeing you, it's reminding me that I, that's not what I wanted. Da, 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 the whole lot of a day to me, so I was like entertaining it, but like not even really. So we were still together at that point. I was just like, okay, well, if you still take some time to think about it, but if that's the decision that you're going with, then okay, cool. But still take some time to think about it because I don't know if I completely trust that. All right. So. We're driving back and I start to feel sick and worse and worse and worse and worse. And then they told me when they took me outside to get some air, I just completely passed out. Like I passed out and then I came back and they were driving to try to find something to help me and then I passed out again. And so I pushed me to the hospital. They said it was all in my head. They said I was making it up. I can breathe. I'm perfectly fine. It's just all. <laughs> and when she got there, she immediately removed me from the hospital. Immediately.
like immediately took me out of that hospital my mother was a nurse so she knew what she was doing she saw the woman go to give me an iv and immediately saw that the woman did not know what she was doing so she immediately removed me from that hospital and we drove to another hospital and i i did not hear from t i was in the hospital i was pretty high off drugs i was pretty high off hospital drugs i'm not gonna lie I, I was pretty like it, it was like I went from being very young to super old like in the drop of a like it's a second hospital and they could not figure out what was going on for me like for the dear life of them they could not figure out what was going on they said they ran every test under the moon they did everything they could not figure it out they, my mom was like something's not right she couldn't figure out what it was she heard from T he goes on and he was just like, oh, I'm a terrible boyfriend. I should have been there for you. I should have been at the hospital for you. I should, I, and I wasn't there. Um, I'm a terrible boyfriend. I'm a terrible boyfriend. It just kept going on. Keep in mind, I'm like on so many drugs that I can't even entertain this like that. I'm just like, it's okay. You didn't have a ride. It's okay. Um, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. <laughs> we get to the third hospital and i literally am so happy that we met this particular doctor he walked in we have been waiting we've been there all day all day and i was still in the same predicament um he walked in and he ran two tests on me and in less than 30 minutes he figured out what was wrong with me he was like it's it's most lot is more seen in children and that's why every hospital you went to did not test for it and so if i was to stay in a hospital my immune system is too weak and if i was to get sick by one of the other patients i was basically breathing through a dime-sized hole in my throat at that point and if that was to close then it to be in and send me home because he thought it was best for me not to be in the hospital and a half nothing changed i was still really really bad my mom was getting nervous my sister's like if i didn't turn this around like if i didn't start getting stronger then the hole was just getting smaller and i was gonna stop breathing to a point different people to watch me while I was asleep. So my sisters usually came to sleep on the floor in the living room to watch me while I was asleep to make sure that I didn't stop breathing in my sleep. And it's really hard, I'm not gonna lie. It was really, really hard because I was laying there and I couldn't do anything. And I just felt like I was being a burden on everybody, which I know is insane because I'm and to know like there's a big chance like the doctor looked me in my face and was like if you don't get better if this does not turn around you are going to die and to hear that and to like see like i'm like no i'm not gonna die i'm gonna be perfectly fine but then like to see my family's reactions in the middle of the night like i was up and i would hear them crying laying next to me it's like like crying bullet tears and i would act sleep so they didn't feel bad but it's like to see that that's like settles into a person like wow like i might actually die like oh let me stop crying okay hold on they kicked my medicine up and i i, I just told myself and i just prayed that day i was like i'm not dying <laughs> like god i'm not coming home so like we need to figure this out <laughs> like we need to fix something because i'm not dying today it's not happening and so they kicked my medicine up at the hospital and my mom changed the dose. And after my second visit with her doctor, um, I started to get better. I was, um, we could see little changes of me being able to the restroom by myself and walk back. I thought that it was working. So I went to the hospital and he indeed ensured that like I was getting better. I still needed time, but I was getting better. And so... I was still keeping up with the friends who had drove me to the hospital, letting them know that I was okay, what my mom was doing, and then, then when I started to feel better, I was doing it. But um, I noticed that I wouldn't get, like, much of a response from anybody. Like, I, it was just kind of like, it was only one person continuously checking on me. Everybody else was just kind of like, it is what it is type vibes. I was texting one of the friends, and I was just like, oh, I'm mad at S because he hasn't checked in on me jokingly, jokingly. Um, um, I was so joking. I was like, oh, um, I'm bad at S or whatever. And so then S calls me and was like, I don't like how you're acting. You're acting like D. You can't get mad at me um, just because T is out with his new girl. That ain't got nothing to do with me. You should just get over it.
And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. First of all, don't come at me like that book zone. Who you talk to? I was playing with you. And now you finna make it real serious. And we finna have a problem up in here. Two, T is with who? Because last time I checked, T was still in a relationship texting my phone last week, telling me, crying to me, telling me how sorry he felt. And rocking with somebody else while he using my ass. That's, that's how I felt. Like, I felt real mad. Because I was just like, you know, like, I'm human at the end of the day. I try to be understanding. I wanted to see if he told me about it because he felt bad or he told me about it because he was being petty. So I told him and I was just like, oh, I just bought this person this for our anniversary. Like, how could they do this ba to me, basically? And he was just like, oh, mm, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what's going on. That's what the brother said. Maybe I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just a friend. Maybe he's just working on a project or something. And I was just like, mm hmm okay. And so that hangs up the conversation. And T is texting me like normal, hitting my phone. Are you okay? How you doing? Da, 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 da. I miss you. I love you. The whole nine yards or whatever, right? And I'm just like, mm, that's interesting. And then he goes ghost for four days. Like, I don't hear nothing from him. And only calls my phone off another number and was like, why are you steady buying me stuff? Don't you see this relationship is going down the drain? Uh, S told me to stay with you because you were buying me things, but I'm not that type of person. I'm not going to do that. Jess, um, don't you see that I don't care about you anymore? Don't you see that I don't want to be with you anymore? Just let it go. Invisible. If you've ever been there, then you know what I'm talking about. I just felt completely invisible replaceable and disgusted and so it was really hard for me to like everything started spiraling after that and I was like wow like that was just like that that took me back that took me back it's hard to my core I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna sit on camera and act like I was just somebody who just like dealt with it and really thought that they wasn't there for me because they couldn't be but it was in reality that they weren't there for me because they didn't want to be I just had to let it go at that point i was not holding grudges i was not being mean i was like i know you're going through a lot i'm gonna let you have this you take it because my journey doesn't end here i wanted to say this story because i want to show that everybody's not on the same journey everybody's not on the same journey path and you got to give people the space and the opportunity to make mistakes even if the mistakes that they make is hurting you it might change their life entirely. It might help them grow entirely. And it's going to help you grow in a different way. Thank y'all for tuning into this video. I really appreciate it. I know I got vulnerable and cried a couple of times. that, But please don't hold it against a girl. Uh, in this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that bell. So when I post a video, uh, you can tell. Alright, y'all. It's Paige Turner. Let's go. Take it. Take it.